So I've been involved in the program committee for about three years now. And really what had started was a conversation about what kind of technical sessions or panels did I want to see and wasn't seeing. Um, and, and for me, as somebody who transitioned from an engineering role to a more of a commercial role, one of the things that really stood out to me is that there was a lot of great technical content or, you know, if you were on the, the, the expo floor, like there's a lot of equipment. But, you know, it was really focused on the how, not necessarily the why in some cases. Um, and so for me, it was really an opportunity to provide kind of more input from the commercial side to kind of the, the drivers behind kind of the offshore energy industry as a whole. One of the things that people don't realize about working with OTC, and this is true probably of kind of many other similar sized organizations, but uh, you're in it for the, the long haul, right? You know, some of these conversations for me, at least on the panel, started pretty much at the previous year's OTC. Um, and so, you know, you've got this long runway to start gathering ideas, bouncing them off other people, talking to the other committees, see if there's maybe some critical mass you can gather around the idea, and then identifying speakers. But, you know, there's, as I said, a kind of a long period of time you get to do this. So, you know, if you start thinking about in May, you know, you start gathering kind of all the people and the content in October, and you finalize it maybe call it January or February. So, yeah, there's a lot to do, um, but you normally have a lot of time to do it. And it as long as you're organized with other societies, um, you're not really lifting the whole burden yourself. So, I mean, there are probably about three things that stand out to me. You know, one, as I said, I got involved because I thought there might be a bit of a content gap. So for professionals like me from the commercial side, you know, with a lot of interest in OTC as an engineer, I've been attending several years. I wanted to keep being involved, but there seemed to be something that, you know, perhaps I could add or at least work with others to bring. Um, I think the, the second one is really, it's a really great exposure. There's a lot of opportunities to meet other engineers um, or other professionals in, with your similar backgrounds, working for you know, similar companies, um, sometimes even the same company. I think it's a lot of opportunity to really get some you know, either one-on-one -on -one time or at least some face time with kind of other professionals that are kind of in your orbit. And then I think the last thing is, right, there's that whole professional credential kind of approach, right? It's important, you know, as a young professional be involved kind of in your community, um, whether you're talking about kind of the broader Houston community or, you know, more narrowly the engineering community. Um, and this certainly is, you know, a, a high profile conference with a lot of content, a lot of people involved. Um, and so, you know, if you're going to get involved in one thing or, you know, one other thing, right, this certainly is one of the things that for me kind of rises to the top of the list. For me, I got involved mainly because I knew someone who was already involved and certainly that's the easiest approach. But uh, I, I think if you're a young professional and you're active in one of these different organizations, um, I think the first thing is just reaching out, right? I mean, the, the committees are you know, publicly up on the website. Um, they're from either your company or companies very similar to yours. Um, and they're typically people with your same background. And certainly, at least in my experience, they're interested in having young professionals get more involved. So, I mean, I said the first things first is really, you know, shoot out an email or, you know, get in touch one way or another.